Good morning. Welcome. Good to see you, Connie. And Betty and Anna. Monica and Krista are with us. Good morning. Welcome. Oh, so nice. Trish. Sharon. Nate. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Good to see so many people back after the hiccup last week. <laughs> you know, I just, um, I, I am very glad to be back. I just wanted to say I had, um, when I looked at the password, I had to look at it a couple times to figure out that the O was uh, a zero. zero. So it's a little bit of a confusing pattern. Oh, it's still wrong. So um, anyway, just FYI, glad to be here. Yeah, it was an assigned password. We don't have a choice and we didn't even know it was coming. Ugh. Oh, shoot. <laughs> How can they give you an ambiguous assigned password? Oh, darn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, such it is. Such it is. So maybe on the website we could put underneath zero, write it oh, out yeah. or something to help make that more clear. Good yeah, idea. or uh, what was it? 40 Bray. Is that it? 40 B-R-E? Yeah. Yeah, I just copied it. That made it easier. Oh yeah, That's yeah, smart. I copied it. Too. That's smart. <laughs> it's good that you have the password, though. I was in um, a meeting last week where it got bombed, which wasn't very pleasant. So really, was it a big meeting or a small meeting? It was a big one. I think it was maybe because it was advertised fairly widely, oh. but. Yikes. Yeah. What happens when they get bombed? Well, I only stuck around for the first part because I didn't want to see what happened next. But they started screaming, and then after I left, they were posting pornography. Mm. Yeah. So I was glad to see your password with the, the O in it. It made it more challenging. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> yeah, it's a fascinating dilemma how to make things available publicly for groups like this, but also have some security in. Yeah. So far we've been okay. But. And speaking of that, Nate and I talked about trying to uh, gather people's email addresses. So if you want to put those in the comments or email one or both of us, uh, then if something like this comes up again, uh, we can alert people that way. Completely optional. Well, so last week we were going to do the mountain meditation, but it didn't happen. Um, uh, not Gmail. Mine is AOL. Thank you. I was trying to be helpful. <laughs> yes, no, that's, you're so efficient. I saw you typing away. <laughs> I'm old school. Um, so we were going to do the mountain meditation. Instead, uh, inspired by Trisha's comment a number of weeks ago, we did some Ujjayi breathing. That's the, um, it's a breath that you can actually hear. So maybe we'll play a little bit with that again. Uh, it seemed like a couple people liked that, uh, but we will do the mountain meditation today. And as usual, we'll have some conversation for the last 10 minutes or so. So any other administrative or logistical questions before we, uh, before we meditate this morning? Hearing none. I'll just invite folks to find a comfortable seated position. This meditation is best done in, in a seated position. It can be done in other positions, but uh, it, that is the recommended one, and you'll see why. So finding a comfortable seated position where um, the spine is, uh, is 
erect or, or, or straight in, in that neutral kind of position, but no, with no stiffness or tension. And if it's comfortable and available, allowing the eyes to relax, perhaps close all the way or part way, and inviting and allowing any unneeded tension to just melt away in the body. As you softly bring your attention to the flow of the breath. So sitting comfortably, both relaxed and alert, and feeling fully as best you can in this moment, each in breath. and each out breath. Without trying to change anything, simply observe the breath. What happens in the body as I breathe in? And what happens in my body as I breathe out? Allowing and inviting the body to be both energized and still. And keeping the mouth closed, if you like, allowing the soft palate to be soft. See if you can make sound as you breathe in and as you breathe out. Kind of like a sigh or some people describe it like an ah or even sometimes called the, uh, the Darth Vader sound. So the mouth is closed, if that's comfortable and available, breathing in and out through the nose. And see if this is comfortable to make some sound. And just try a few cycles of that. This is called the Ujjayi breath. Set to bring calming and centering and warmth. Increased awareness. For some of us, it naturally prompts us to breathe more deeply. So if that's uncomfortable for any reason, just let the Ujjayi breath go. If that's working for you, you can continue that all along or shuttle in and out of the Ujjayi breath as we go. And now I'll invite you to picture in your mind's eye a mountain. And this of course could be a mountain you've actually seen or visited or climbed 
So it could, could be one you've seen in a photo or drawing or painting. It could be simply one that you imagine. And hold the image and feeling of this mountain in your mind's eye. And allow it to gradually come into greater focus. Observe its overall shape. It's lofty peak or peaks high in the sky. The large base rooted in the rock of the earth's crust. It's steep or gently sloping sides. Perhaps colors. Wildlife. Plants trees, whatever its shape or appearance, simply sit and breathe with the image of the mountain. Noticing the many qualities in as much detail as you can. Breathing, observing, noticing. And in your own time, if this feels comfortable, see if you can bring the mountain into your body in your mind's eye. So that the body sitting here and the mountain in your mind's eye become one. Rooted in this sitting posture, you become the mountain. Your head becomes the lofty peak. Supported by the rest of the body. Your shoulders and arms meld with the sides of the mountain. Your glutes and legs form the solid base 
rooted to your chair or cushion. Becoming more and more grounded in this image of yourself as the mountain. With each breath, you become more and more a breathing mountain. unwavering in your stillness. Completely what you are. Beyond words and thought. A centered, rooted, unmoving presence. And as you sit, in your mountainness, all of your rooted, grounded, majestic glory, become aware of the fact that as the sun travels across the sky, Light and shadows and colors change moment by moment. Night follows day. Day follows night. A canopy of stars the moon replaced by the sun. Glorious sunrises beckon a new day.
breathtaking sunsets. Proceed the needed night. Through it all, the mountain remains still. while also experiencing change in each moment. Both constantly changing and always simply being, remaining itself. The mountain remains still through weather changes, seasons flowing, calmness abides. In fall, the mountain may wear a coat of brilliant colors. Replaced perhaps by snow and ice and winter. Greens gradually reemerge in spring. Followed by the heat of summer. In any season, the mountain may find itself enshrouded in clouds. Or fog. Or pelted by freezing rain. Clouds come by, sometimes quickly, sometimes slowly. And then the clouds go. The mountain's magnificence and beauty are not altered, 
by the weather. And they're not changed by the way people see it. Seen or unseen. In sun or clouds. Broiling or frigid. Day or night. The mountain sets. The mountain remains itself. Even when visited by violent storms, even when buffeted by snow and rain, winds of unthinkable magnitude, through it all, the mountain continues to set unmoved, true to its essence. And in the same way as we sit in meditation, we can embody the same unwavering stillness and rootedness in the face of everything that changes in our own lives. By becoming the mountain, we can link up with its strength and stability and adopt it as our own. We can use its energies to support our energy to encounter each moment with mindfulness. to encounter each moment with equanimity. To encounter each moment with clarity. Our thoughts and feelings any preoccupations, emotional storms, any crises, whatever happens to us, are very much like the weather to the mountain. The weather of our own lives is not to be ignored or denied. It is simply to be encountered, honored, felt, known for what it is, simply held in awareness.
And holding it in this way, we may come to know a deeper silence, stillness, and wisdom. It's deeply rooted and grounded within us, just like the mountain. And if you like, returning to a few cycles of breath using that ujjayi breath, if that worked for you earlier. So the mouth remains closed, breathing in and out through the mouth. See if you can make a sound. Just very, very gently, softly. And then releasing that. When you're ready, allowing the chin, if this is available and comfortable, to drop toward the chest, gently fluttering the eyes open, and coming back to the community. Well, would anyone want to say a few words about what that experience was like for you? That was pretty profound for me. Thank you for that very much. Um, I um, lived for a long time in Flagstaff, Arizona. And there was a mountain there that was very grounding for me and led itself very nicely to this meditation. Mm -hmm. And I miss that mountain so much. <laughs> so now I have another way to think about it. Nice, thanks Trish. Beautiful. Mm. It's with you in a deeper way or another way. Yeah, nice. Mm. I'm experiencing a reluctance to move and really appreciating that mountainness that I'm experiencing. Nice. Sounds like um, embodied is the word that's coming to mind. Like it really, that went within. I really liked the this mountain meditation as well. I was picturing myself at the Sawtooth Mountains near Lutzen, which I like to hike there on the Superior Hiking Trail. I really appreciated the visual about having the roots way deep down into the earth and if the wind comes by and the wind is blowing and the weather's terrible, that the roots are firmly in the ground and I'm grounded. I had, um, it's just really helpful this week just because I have been dealing with some kind of fear-based behavior around me and, and then sometimes I doubt myself and this really helped me a lot to just remember that I do have deep roots and that I have been making a commitment for many years to have serenity and peace in my life. And this is uh, an image that I'll draw on for strength this week. So thank you. 
Nice, you're welcome. Thanks for the comments. I'm glad. So glad. One of the things, a uh, very minor thing that just stood out for me, um, I also liked that groundedness of the mountain, but the phrase of the needed night. And I just, I loved that. That just um, spoke to me that as that darkness comes, that, that that is as necessary as all the other beautiful images that you talked about. So um, I liked that. Um, as well. I'm glad, Connie. It's so funny. That was, a, that was an impromptu add-in that came to me in the moment. Um, this is adapted from, a, a, and I meant to say this earlier, a, a meditation that John Kabat-Zinn, I believe, created. Um, and, you know, I allow myself all, all sorts of artistic license, and, and that's what came to me in that moment, thinking, of course, in part about what we're all going through right now in this pandemic. Interesting that that would be just have come to you. And that was the one thing that really yeah. stuck out in my mind. That's interesting. Thank you. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I also really liked the mountain meditation I've never done that before and it made me feel stronger and um, that whatever has happened or that um, I can stay still and strong and and so I appreciate the the visual I've never done it with a mountain before and it, it was a really effective visual aid. Wonderful, Monica. So glad. Thanks for the comments. We might have time for one more comment. Anyone else want to say just a few words about your experience? I would just add add also that the deep imagery and the grounding of the mountain was really um, beautiful and really a welcome feeling to experience right now that just that deep, deep grounding. Thank you. Nice. Thank you, Chris. I'm glad. Well, we're almost out of time. Nate, any preview for next week? Oh, I I have two different ideas that I'll work on, and um, but it'll be a, a good, solid mindfulness-based meditation. Practice mindfulness meditation. So, cool. Well, well, we'll be back same time, same bat channel. And a reminder: we put Tom's email and also my email in the chat. If you want to send us your emails, and then we can communicate if there are hiccups, um, or you can check the website and hopefully. If there are <laughs> technical issues, Tom can update the website pretty quickly. So that will uh, be the two ways that you can uh, work through any issues. So, Thank you for offering this. No, oh, you're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a great week, everybody. <laughs> you too. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs>